Oh, come on. Got him. Right there, man. Big stud walleyes, middle of the day, running around jigging. Welcome back to another video. Oh, it's the sun angle. Can't see. It's like super white, bright outside. I can see my face just a little bit, but welcome back to another video. At least what I think is going to be another video out here today. And uh, we're fishing uh, for some walleyes today up in Minnesota. Did a lot of ice checking today, poked around a few different spots, and uh, yeah, now it's kind of the current time, which is basically like the middle of the day and uh, we're gonna fish this kind of into the evening type of window <clears throat> and hope that that's kind of the deal today but um, we are post mega storm crazy amount of snow crazy amount of wind crazy amount of very cold temperatures probably the past week or so now it's like a moon solar uh, lunar moonscape you guys know what I'm trying to say but it is crazy out here big drifts everywhere drifts are rock hard Ice fluctuates a lot. If you are going on the ice anywhere in ice fishing world over the course of the next several weeks, check very thoroughly. Ice depth varies a lot in a lot of different places you're gonna go. And uh, it's obviously well worth taking the time to check, but um, didn't find too much slush out here today and uh, kind of made a long run out to this location. So we're gonna punch some holes. It's probably about negative seven, negative eight out today. So we're gonna punch a few holes, get the camera set up in the otter, and probably drill kind of a larger grid of holes to kind of hole hop around and uh, get it going on. So stay tuned. Hopefully we're gonna catch some nice walleyes this evening up here in Minnesota. Ooh. Fogging up in here. The fog up will end once the camera's kind of fully run up, but we're gonna run two different setups today. One dead stick setup, as you guys know I like to do. Kind of an average size shiner or sucker on there, run that a little bit off the bottom. And then on rod number two, my jigging presentation, we're gonna be running, fishing a little bit deeper water today in that 24 to like 28 foot range. So I'm gonna be running, start out anyways with the tungsten cast master. I don't even know if this is gonna focus or what we got going on here. We'll just do a little, little wipe off here real quick, but tungsten cast master spoon, phenomenal tool for fishing deeper water. I don't know if you guys could see that, but that is wonder bread. One of my absolute favorite ice fishing colors. So that's kind of the game plan. We'll get our dead sticks set about a foot and a half, two feet up, and then we'll commence the jigging and see what happens here. Oh, come on. Got him. Right there, man. Just started hole hopping too. Feeling like a real nice fish, man. Feeling like a real nice fish. There we go. Spent just a minute or two in the shack. Shot out here and fish on. Oh yeah, real nice walleye. Really nice walleye, dude. Look at that. Look at that wonder bread. Tungsten cast master right in the roof of the mouth and dude that is exactly What we were hoping for he is about as much of a handful as he could be Let's See if we can show him off real quick if we can get a camera there's another camera to work outside here Look at that That is what we are after right there, dude beautiful walleyes on the jig rod too and uh, just kind of started hopping around that is what it's all about right there. Feels good to get one out of the way. Nowhere near prime time yet. We're gonna let him go because his fins are kind of starting to freeze up. Single digits out here. Look at that, good as it gets right there, man. Flew up right up on the old hummingbird. And when you're jigging deeper water, this is a lethal tool. This tongue, you guys know how much I like this, the standard Castmaster spoons. This one right here is the tungsten variety. Big beefy hook on there. I always like the red hooks. 
Wonder Bread's always a good color, but it's a solid tungsten spoon. So it works so well in deeper water. And this is the same size body as like an eighth ounce spoon, but it weighs a full quarter. So it's super, if you're doing a lot of this hole hopping, it's awesome to kind of fly around. It shoots down through that slush or that ice in the hole. It's very fast. Fish is very nice and heavy. And obviously that fish just <clears throat> absolutely throttled it. You guys could probably kind of see where the shack's at right there. That is right kind of on the top side of this thing as it kind of starts coming up like that. And I'm just kind of at the base here in like 28, 29 feet of water. And that fish bit about five feet up off bottom. He was not messing around well. Let's get another minnow head and do that again because that was a good time. Big mark. Got him. Dude. Man, that one took a little bit to finesse. Gotta get my other camera on. We're trying to get it done out here in the cold. Feeling good. Look at that rod. Whoa. whoa. <laughs> How you gonna be it, man? I gotta get my deucer out. This is gonna be another really nice fish. Look at that rod. Dude, middle of the day. Here's my leader. This is where having a longer flexible rod like this. This is the 44 light. And the lower catch of big fish do really big fish. <laughs> look at the shoulders on that one, man. And look what he did to this tungsten spoon. I constantly got to check cameras when it's this cold because the audio is, can be a little dicey sometimes. Choked, man. Look at that. How are you gonna beat that right there? Big stud walleyes, middle of the day, running around jigging. Doesn't get any better than that, does it? Wow, dude, the fight, the way that fish kind of finally, finally fired up. It's good as it gets right there, man. Beautiful, look at that sight right there. Wow, and kind of the only guy in sight out here. Let's let that guy go. Well, since I've been outside, they have really treated me well. And that's both those fish so far in that same spoon. And I think we're probably gonna rock that one for a while. And I really wanted, one thing that's key when you're doing kind of a downsized presentation like this, cause like I said, a lot of times we're right just post this big front just blew through. It's very cold out, high pressure. Downsize can be very key. But having a presentation like this, that still fish is heavy and has that big hook on there because a lot of your smaller walleye presentations are not geared towards catching big walleyes this one obviously is we'll go ahead and fire back down and do it again i gotta put another chunk of minnow on because this is too much fun huh couple fish boom boom both very good size and i don't always tip with a minnow but uh as i was kind of running around earlier today it seemed like the fish were kind of a little bit tentative so a lot of times just sticking obviously the little piece of meat on there. Doesn't really matter if it's the head or the tail, just some chunk of meat on there. A lot of times you're gonna be better off than you would without, so. Oh dude, here we go. Come on. Definitely gotta work them a little bit in the middle of the day. Got him right there. Fish on, boys, fish on. Feeling like another good fish, man. It's gonna be another nice one. Stay on. Really gave him the, the beans on that one. Put it to him on the hook set. Feeling nice, feeling nice, feeling nice. Get the transducer out of the hole. <laughs> oh, are we having fun or are we having fun now? Dude, this is a good time. Here's Swivel. Here's Swivel, it's gonna be another good one. When they start jogging the hole like that, Kinda when you know. <laughs> oh, caught on the side of the ice. What do you do? What do you do? Well, it was definitely another nice fish. Come on. Here it comes. What, dude, how did that fish not bite? Come on. Got two of them on the screen. 
One of them's got to mess up. Got him right there. Fish on. There he is. I just knew that. <laughs> One of those fish was going to have to make a mistake. One of them was. And anytime you get a couple of them on the graph like that. Dude, what is going on here? This feels big again. We got all cameras rolling. It's so cold out I can only intermittently run this camera. So I'm kind of trying my best here. Come on, buddy. Come on. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Look at that thing, dude. If you are gonna be jigging some clear water walleyes in deeper water this year, get yourself that spoon. It is such, it is so nice to fish with. So many spoons in deeper water, especially finesse spoons. They're so light, they're tough to fish. This one's just crushing them. Dude, that's as good as it gets right there. Thumping big walleyes. Early afternoon, it's below zero out, but there's no wind out, and there's nobody within miles of me. So it feels like it's about 35 degrees out, especially after the last week of weather, which, as you guys know, has been beyond brutal in the Midwest, almost to the point where, like, fishing was basically not an option. Keeping power on at the house <laughs> was about all you could manage to do last week, especially where... Where I'm at, we lost power a whole bunch in the snow, but uh, the storm is finally over. Ice conditions on somebody's water seemingly seem to have made it a little bit better. Other lakes, especially it seems like northern Wisconsin stuff, a lot of slush. But really, no matter where you're going to go, you've really got to be watching ice conditions this year. Like any year, but this year especially, just with how much snow a lot of the, a lot of the Midwest got. So definitely keep that in mind. No fish. It's obviously ever worth your life. As many times as you hear that, it is certainly true. Just let that fish go. <laughs> it's gonna be a smaller one. Definitely gonna be probably a little walleye here, but it's a good be able to run the camera kind of the whole time there little walleye a little 13 incher right there i'll let him go no bait on the spoon that time i'd have to go back to the shack to get more bait and we're just in the middle of school right now and i always say this but one big tip if you're gonna be faced with the potential of having to jig a walleye without bait on there don't let it sit still don't let them stare at it and play the keep away game I would say even more than you normally have to with walleyes. You know, a lot of times you can kind of, when they're really aggressive, you can kind of just let them come up and grab it. Any amount of twitching will do, but a lot of times Kia's key is kind of walking the spoon around. <laughs> and I know this is going to be another small one too, but you kind of can see how much I'm twitching that and then keeping the bait two, three feet away from them so they can never really look at it. And oh my gosh, are we catching walleyes of all sizes right now? He got nothing but the hook on that one. Look at that trophy. This is easily the smallest walleye you guys have ever seen featured on this channel. See you later. Well, my original set of holes I was doing good at are kind of end right here. And this piece of shallower piece of structure is kind of going this way, then back to my shack. So a lot of times, even when you grid out a big area like this, you end up drilling more holes kind of after you start fishing. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to do now. We're just going to kind of set ourselves up, hopefully, so we can really run and gun. Kind of come that last light hour. So you always want to have holes, some in deeper water. And if those fish do pop up to the top, I can just kind of, you know, fish my way right in there so I don't have to start drilling more holes right at prime time, right where the fish are. Oh, come on. That one just popped off the bottom. Looks like a decent mark. 
got him. Right there. Feeling like another nice fish. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a good one. Gonna be a good one. Dude, we are just on some serious fish right now. And all the, I guess the part of the video you guys didn't see that much of is the part where I was running around all morning trying to find a bunch of them. But uh, there we go, it's another really nice fish right there. Look at that, man. Man, never gets old. We're having a good time right now, all by our lonesome. I feel like I'm already, I've am already already made several calls for people to tell people, hey, come out fishing with me tomorrow <laughs> for buddies so I can, we can capitalize on some of this first ice magic. And, you know, we've been ice fishing for a while now. Fish is steaming. It's so cold out. And uh, some lakes have a ton of ice. Some lakes are just kind of building ice. And there we go. And as kind of a lot of times as you can get to different parts of certain lakes um, it gives you some more ability to catch a bunch more fish so that's kind of what we got going on right now there we go it's just a solid 18 19 he's gonna play possum in the hole here up oh, and he's just gonna fire away <laughs> oh man tough to beat man tough to beat i don't know if we should be tipping with a minnow head if we shouldn't if he matters anymore Let's see if i even have any more minnow heads all right, guys, well, obviously we're catching just a pile of fish this afternoon. I want to take a quick minute to kind of break down some of this location on the Walleye Now app, um, kind of where I'd like to set up. Basically, when you take, you know, maybe a really big lake like this, a Mille Lacs, and how you can kind of, you know, pick a big piece of structure and just by looking at the map, kind of break down sweet spots on those bigger deep water pieces of structure. That and how you like to drill out holes, how you like to start this big grid system of holes to kind of find fish, the ice trolling part of the program. So um, that part will be on the wall and up. I just kind of filmed it um, on location, looking at the graphs saying, hey, this is where I like to set up. This is where they kind of set up during the day. This is where a lot of times they move in low light hours. So if that kind of stuff is intriguing to you guys, Get over to the Walleye Now app, click Let's Go Fish at the bottom of the page, and click Ice for your season, and that thumbnail looks something like this. But for now, I'm going to get back to whole hopping because we are on top of a pile of walleyes. Got him, dude. Wow, did that fish fire up. Oh, <laughs> it's hard to run. Oh, he's going crazy now. Look at this thing go, dude. It's hard to run the cameras the whole time. Just because of the way, how cold it is out. Oh, he's right here. This could be a really good fish. Oh. So I'm kind of tasked with just, oh my gosh, he's hooked like right in the head. <laughs> oh it's a really nice fish but that's why he felt super big and dude is that a fat one well they make them feel really big when they like hook like that that spoon is on fire that same what do you call that wonder bread tungsten cast master best part is how fast you can fish that bait I just went in the shack to warm up a second. Now I just soaked my hand again grabbing that fish. Wow, how does it get any better? What a fun afternoon this has been. I don't know if we're even gonna stay till dark or we're just gonna like call it a win because this is such, such a ridiculous window. And man, that fish just absolutely shot up off bottom at a super ridiculous speed. I almost couldn't even turn the chest camera on. My hand's sticking to the reel now that it's wet. It's just your classic getting close to that sundown window jig bite. Unbelievable, and right on cue, now we're up in 24, 23 feet of water catching them right where they should be this time of night. And a lot of times you can start going more aggressive once you get to this window, keeping that spoon real high and doing a lot more of this because you're essentially just trying to attract a fish into the zone the bite should pretty much just happen and a lot of times i always say in certain situations while always will be as aggressive as you let them be you know if you're sitting there doing this they're never really going to get that aggressive but when you're popping a spoon and darting it around up high off the water off the bottom like this they'll come up and smoke it pretty ridiculously fast 
Here we go. Fish on. First, I didn't think he was very big, but now he's feeling all right. First, I didn't think he was that big. Let's see if we can turn that on quick. He's not gonna be a super big one, but nice walleye. And man, have we ever caught a ton of fish this afternoon. And I don't even know if we have to keep fishing, if we're just gonna kinda end the video right there. There's a 15, 16. Caught some big ones, caught some small ones, caught some in-between ones. So I still have a fish on the screen. But man, dude, what a fun little afternoon bite this was. Took me a while today, running around drilling holes just looking for fish. But once I found them, they definitely were cooperative. And so far, every single fish today, except for that one lone one on a tip-up, has come on the same spoon. On the old Wonder Bread Tungsten Castmaster, which I'll go ahead and link down below. Well, I think that is gonna do it for today's video. Caught a pile of fish. My hands are finally getting cold after a few hours of jumping around. <laughs> Pretty much just fishing outside at you know, 10 below or whatever it is. But uh, we had some fun. Caught an absolute pile of fish and uh, we'll definitely be back. I'd like to make this trip a couple more times in the next couple weeks. But um, caught a ton of fish today. Like I said, get over to the walleye now if you guys want to see kind of exactly the structures we're fishing, exactly where we're setting up. Did a really good in-depth breakdown you know, using the GPS, showing you how we grid out areas, all that kind of stuff, because that is the deal. Deep water, run and gun, grid fishing. I don't know how well it came through on the video today, but probably worked 50 60 holes in this area um to kind of really pinpoint where the fish were and then to follow them around you just keep kind of hopping which is always one of my favorite kinds of videos to shoot i'm actually amazed that the cameras even functioned outside today it must just be the lack of wind i always keep everything charging and running the whole time but sometimes when it's below zero it's just they just won't even work on a charge so impressed that they worked impressed that we got a bunch of fish and it felt good to wreck a bunch after sitting inside through a hellacious snowstorm the last week or so up here but appreciate you guys watching this video stay tuned for more walleye fishing content this winter had a little bit of a stumble on some crappie content the last week. Hopefully you guys kind of enjoyed that. <laughs> I always say with crappies, you can't drink from the well too many times on crappie videos because they do kind of get repetitive. But uh, walleye fishing, to me, always a little bit different kind of day. So appreciate you guys watching this video. If you guys are not yet, stay tuned for more. Subscribe to this channel. Stay tuned for more content. We're going to bust everything down. Long run off the ice. Get home, edit, and do it all again tomorrow. <laughs>